you know, the big thing that people think is, you know, can I, can I just get better with arthritis with therapy? Or if I have this issue, what does this look like? So there's a tremendous amount of like misinformation that gets posted online. And there's a lot of differing opinions, right? So like, you know, Dr. Google's not always your best friend when it comes to figuring out if your Achilles is torn or not. You know, you probably need to see a doctor for that. Um, everyone Googles their symptoms most of the time, or they, you know, they start searching like orthopedic doctor near me. Well, just because somebody hits the top of the list every time doesn't mean they're the best. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back for another episode of Business Ninjas. I'm here today with Andrew Lovewell. He's the CEO at Columbia Orthopedic Group. Andrew, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, excited to have you. So, Andrew, why don't you start and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so my name's Andrew Lovewell. I am currently the CEO of Columbia Orthopedic Group. We are a private practice group here in uh, Columbia, Missouri, and I've been with our group uh, for about a year. Prior to that, I was the administrator over a large uh, surgery center that our group owned. Uh, I've worked in healthcare for about 15 years. Um, been kind of all over the Midwest and uh, just really excited for our conversation today. That's fantastic. So it sounds like, you know, you've been there for a year. I imagine you've seen some growth and some changes, you know, within the, within the, within the group itself. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah. So our group has been around since uh, 1965. Um, we're a private orthopedic and musculoskeletal group. You know, we have seen tremendous growth and opportunity since COVID, especially in the medical world. Um, you know, everything got kind of turned upside down in our space, uh, you know, in early 2020. And it really accelerated the um, growth from, you know, inpatient hospital type surgery care to the outpatient arena where we deliver care and ambulatory surgery center or more outpatient surgery. And we had to quickly, you know, pivot our business. And, and luckily, we were on the cutting edge already. So we were able to, you know, accomplish that pretty quickly. But you know, the growth from there is just really taken off dramatically in the world of um, the outpatient arena, which is where we kind of specialize in. Hmm, tell me more about that. Yeah. So for us, you know, we um, we practice orthopedic and musculoskeletal surgery. So when we focus on, you know, delivering excellent care to patients, you know, we try to go where the puck is going, not necessarily where it's, where it's been at right now. Um, so when we, uh, we're going through COVID. We were lucky enough. We were expanding our surgery center, um, trying to deliver more outpatient care already. And when COVID happened, it just created this rapid acceleration of what we were already got kind of headed towards. So for us, I don't, I don't want to say like we were fortune tellers by any means, but like we got very lucky where a lot of people around the country were trying to solve the issues we had already solved, you know, a couple of years before that. So we we were extremely successful um, both financially and both also delivering patients a safe environment to get care because a lot of people when they were going through the COVID times they didn't want to go to a hospital they felt like they would get you know more sick so we were able to say okay we've got this environment where we can deliver your care you know safely effectively and we've been doing this you know for 14 15 years already so we're pretty good at it. But now we're just better at it because we've enhanced some of the resources and other options we have for you. So we we said, okay, we're open for business. You know, let's let's go. We can deliver more care. So we saw a you know dramatic increase in our patient visits through the door, a dramatic increase in surgeries. And I think a lot of it was largely due to the fact that, like, as a group that's very much focused on being ahead of the curve, we just got lucky with the timing and we're so far ahead of everybody else that you know, we haven't slowed down since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And an important key I, I have heard in the medical field during that COVID time was that shift to make sure that you were nimble, you were agile, and really able to make that adjustment to the needs of the community. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I think that's where, you know, you see groups that kind of separated themselves from the pack, where if you were nimble, you were able to pivot, 
you know, you had just so much more success in streamlining the care in a safe environment. And I think that's where, you know, a group like ours was extremely lucky because, you know, we're a private group. So the decision makers are at the table, right? Like they're all, the doctors are the owners and they're the ones who can say yes or no to whatever initiative we come up with. And when it came to just delivering good care safely, it's always a yes. It just was a bigger yes. And we just had a bigger market differentiator than what other people had. That's fantastic. So, you know, talking about Columbia Orthopedic Group, you mentioned the outpatient surgical center. Um, Talk to me a little bit more about, you know, you've got the imaging center, the bone health clinic. Talk to me a little bit more about, you know, what else uh, other things that Columbia Orthopedic Group has going on. Yeah, so we're um, we're an old group, but we still got new tricks, right? So we've got a imaging center that's fully vertically integrated into our practice. We can do MRIs, CTs, x-rays, all those things for patients same day, most of the time, super unique. Um, we can also bring in people that aren't quite healthy enough or ready enough for surgery, and we can optimize them, pre-optimize them for surgery so they have the best outcome. With our bone health and bone density clinic, we have nutrition management and weight loss management as well. And then we also own our own retail pharmacy. So we have our own pharmacists on staff to work with you to make sure you're not taking more medicine than you need to. And we offer a lot of non-opioid type surgery through our pharmacists where they can counsel people and say, have you tried CBD? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? We also do our own custom compounding of pain creams where we make a custom pain cream for you based off of what you want to accomplish with your goals and get you back to where you were prior to you having an incident or acute injury. Um, we have a braces and orthotics division as well, where we have people who come around with durable medical equipment. We custom fit, you know, braces, casts, blends, all of those things to you to make sure it's the right thing for you. Like our, pa- our, our patient population has always been first when it comes to our care. So like we've always put other enhancements in place to make that better. So, you know, our next thing we're iterating on is we're putting in a lab so people can have their labs drawn right there, same day. There's no waiting. There's no trying to get things organized. So we're trying to say, okay, we're your one-stop shop for everything orthopedic and musculoskeletal because we just want to be more convenient for our patients. And like, that's what it really comes down to is like just delivering the best, you know, care environment with the most accessible resources. So we don't waste anybody's time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, having, imagine having all of those different supports for, you know, your clients, you know, it makes the world of difference, I imagine. For sure. And I think that's where like, you know, you look at our patient satisfaction and reviews that get posted online, you know, everyone always says like, this is a well-oiled machine. This works great. Like, yeah, it's because we've tried to set it up. So it works great. Like put your, put yourself in the position of the patient. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think we're, we're a provider led organization with physicians, but we're very much patient first. You know, that's always what we've been and we're not going to stop doing that. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious to pick your brain, you know, in the medical industry, you know, as a CEO, I imagine you hear a lot of things that aren't necessarily accurate. Are there a lot of common misconceptions that people tend to think that you would, you know, like the opportunity to kind of speak on and and debunk? I think there's some, there's definitely some things out there where there's some uh, misconceptions or um, thoughts that people have about healthcare in general or um, orthopedics or musculoskeletal care, like, you know, the big thing that people think is, you know, can I, can I just get better with arthritis with therapy? Or if I have this issue, what does this look like? So there's a tremendous amount of like misinformation that gets posted online and there's a lot of differing opinions, right? So like, you know, Dr. Google's not always your best friend when it comes to figuring out if your Achilles is torn or not. You know, you probably need to see a doctor for that. Um, everyone Googles their symptoms most of the time, or they, you know, they start searching like orthopedic doctor near me. Well, just because somebody hits the top of the list every time doesn't mean they're the best. And I think that's where due diligence comes in. Um, you, you know, we're facing like this massive kind of shift in our world with the entrance of AI and clinical decision support systems that that may guide decisions based on, you know, algorithms that exist on the internet today. And like, if we've got bad information on the internet, we're going to get bad advice from the AI bot. So like, there's still the necessary demand for, 
you seeing somebody who's an expert. Like you cannot replace the physician patient relationship. And I think that's where a lot of companies have entered the market, um, like the digital technology companies that provide virtual care via therapy or whatever. Uh, those big platforms like um, there's a company called Hinge or Sword or Kaya or PT Genie, all these things, you know, they're coming to try to um, really disrupt what happens today. And they're they're couching it on this like hypothetical situation that there's a ton of bad doctors that provide bad care and overoperate on patients. Well, that's just not true. You know, there's there's a few bad actors who do bad things, or there's just stuff that happens in surgery that's not planned for. So it's not it's not a fair estimate of um, large groups or national firms to say like orthopedics is an overkill. Like we we do too much surgery. And like our group really kind of prides ourselves on, we see 90,000 patients a year. We operate on less than 10% of them. Wow. wow. So we're an anomaly, right? Like we're a big surgical group, but like we try to not do surgery. So that's, that's a weird thing for us, right? And in our market, people are like, what's wrong with you people? Well, we want people to actually get better. We don't want to just, you know, stick shiny objects in you because it's fun. Like we actually want you to get better. So I think that's where like there's this big disconnect between what people think in reality and what actually happens. Like, and most private groups are like that, right? Like we're not incentivized to, you know, do unnecessary surgery because then we get a bad reputation, right? So like we're incentivized to do what's right for the patient at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, six months from now, you know, if your issue gets more degenerative and we need to do surgery, absolutely. But we want to explore the non-operative options first because, I mean, if you, if you really start thinking about it in a hard way, nobody wants to have surgery. No one, right? Like I had my rotator cuff fixed by one of our docs years ago. I didn't want that, but I had to have it because I tore it up and like I, I was an athlete. So I got injured and needed to have something done. Mm -hmm. So that that's where like, you know, we're there for you when you need us, but we don't always want you to need us all the time. Like we come up with a lot of proactive programs to get people better, you know, non-operatively as much as possible. It's like when you figure that like percentage, like 90,000 patients, less than 9,000 surgeries, 10%, people start going like, wow, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why would, why would you want to run a business that way? Well, we run a business that way because we're good at what we do. And when you need us to do surgery, unquestionably, we're the best in the market, but we're also there for when you don't need surgery. And we're happy to take care of you in a way that's on your terms. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the big, the big misnomer or like big thought people have is like, I'm going to go to a doctor and they're going to want to cut on me right away. No, that's not true. Not our group, especially like we're going to explore every option before we explore that because it's just scary and, you know, things can happen and like surgery is not right for everybody. Like, mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing people kind of get caught up on is they're like, I need to have a surgery. Well, no, you don't. You don't even you don't even know what's wrong with you. Or you saw something online and you think, oh my God, I gotta have my bunion fixed. You know, <laughs> summer weather's coming up, I'm gonna wear sandals. Well, your bunion might not be severe enough that it needs fixed. Or maybe, you know, just changing your shoes is what's gonna be better for you. And you're too high risk for surgery, all these other things. And like what ha what works for one person doesn't work for all. So uh, applying this big platitude of like, here's how this happens. It's just not real. Like, you know, we operate in reality, not theory. So you got to just work one patient up, you know, at a time. You're not a number. You're a patient to us. So I think that's what's super different is like, you will find people out there that want to operate all the time, or you will find people that, you know, plan things out because it makes them more money or it generates more work RVUs or whatever that, you know, they're measured off of, but it's really got to be, you know, right surgery, right place, right care, right patient, all of those things lined up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it really goes to show how patient patient centric um, the group is being able to say, you know, we operate on less than 10% of the people that we see, because like you said, you know, there's you know, some people may be looking for like a fast fix, but really, you know, you, like you said, it may be a simple shoe fix. It may be, you know, trying CBD or things like that. Um, so I think that's a really important, you know, uh, point that you made. Thank you. I think, you know, our, our motto is like moving you forward since 1965, right? Like it doesn't say 
cutting you open since 1965. Like we're all about you. You're the patient. You're who we're taking care of. You know, we we don't we're not gonna hang hats on like, oh yeah, I did you know 50 percent of my surgeries today on 50 percent of patients. Like that's not what we're about. It, it's about truly aligning the care with the right patient. Like we we have you know significantly increased the non-operative throughput in our clinics because there's a ton of people who just don't need surgery. You still need help. You still need a doctor. You still need advice. You need physician directed care. But we we don't think everybody walking in the door needs cut on. And I think that's where, you know, the the biggest barrier to entry for most people is like when you're like, I'm going to go see an orthopedic surgeon. Oh, I'm scared. They're going to want to cut me open. No, that's not true. And I, I can tell you, we're part of a large consortium called the Ortho Forum, the top 100 private practice groups in the country that all kind of work together. We benchmark data. We have you know conferences, learn from each other, do a lot of great things. Every private group is like this. Yeah. We're the same way. We all believe in the same philosophies, which is just taking care of people and providing really damn good care. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Well, Andrew, as we start to wrap up this call, is there anything that you want to leave our listeners with either, you know, about the medical industry, you know, Columbia Orthopedic Group, anything you want to leave our listeners with? You know, I think, you know, the biggest um, kind of take home for me would be, you know, do your diligence if you're pursuing healthcare with any field, not not just orthopedics, not musculoskeletal, just any field out there, do your diligence. And you, you can't just believe everything you find online, you know, WebMD, Dr. Google, like they don't know. And, you know, thinking that you're going to get the best advice from Googling something about like, I've got X and Y. Well, you don't even know if you have X and Y. You, <laughs> you haven't even been diagnosed. So thinking that you're going to, you know, automatically attribute, you know, like stuff to a symptom you have intermittently, and it's not even that, like, that's just not real, you know? And I think that's probably one of the biggest things in the healthcare field that is a, is a battle is because we're trying to solve, you know, what's false information on Wikipedia or this or that, or all these different things every day. I mean, let's say we see 500 patients a day in our practice, which is pretty close. And over half of them have Googled their symptoms for sure. They, they have looked on the line and they've said, I have this. And then we get an x-ray taken or an MRI or a CT or something else done. And it is just not that. Like they have something else that's like, or the, the classic one we come in with all the time is, I have hip pain, I need my hip replaced. Well, actually, no, you have back pain in your low back. You need therapy or you need core strengthening. Like you don't need your hip replaced. You need something else altogether. And I think that's where people can really like learn a lot from, you know, digital content that's on doctors' websites. You know, if you've got a group in your market, especially a private group, explore their website. Or if you've got a group who's partnered with a really great hospital like we are, explore the hospital's website. Because we've built out a ton of content that's available for people free, right? Like, we're not trying to sell content and education to people. We're trying to make people well-informed consumers. Mm -hmm. Because if you're showing up and you're going, you know, Betty down the street had X, Y, and Z done, and she had this. Well, Betty down the street's not you. Like, you're not Betty. Betty had this done because she needed it done. You don't need that done. You need this done. And I think that's really hard for some people to accept sometimes because it's it's a challenge because just because one person has it doesn't mean all people need it, right? So, and I think that's where you got to provide really patient-centered care, but like the patients have to be willing to be cared for in the way that the experts say too. And I think there can be some conflict there when it's like, Dr. Google said A and the doctor says B, the doctor's wrong, Google's right. Well, probably not. <laughs> or get a second opinion. You know, like we always welcome second opinions, right? Like go see another doctor, go see another fellowship trained board certified doctor, just like that one and see what they say. Because, you know, they might say you need B plus C instead of A, or they might say, well, B is a really good option, but I prefer, you know, B 2.0. Like there's, there's different things out there. And I think that's where, you know, if you're, if you want to be an informed consumer, yeah, look online all day long. But that doesn't mean you're going to be like led down the right path. 
Yeah. And I think, you know, there is an education behind, you know, finding a good, you know, a good group like Columbia Orthopedic Group who is invested in its patients and, you know, willing to take the time to, to hear, you know, your concerns and also, you know, make a make an informed decision to, to do what's in, in the best of interest of your clients. Absolutely. I mean, there's a balance, right? And like striking a balance and everything in life is what has to naturally happen. So you know, you've got to, you got to be able to kind of suss out like what is a real reputable reference versus mm -hmm. what is a, you know, a SEO pushed search engine thing that gets something to the top because somebody wants to do a surgery to you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where like, there's difficulty from a, just a general patient population because they just don't know the difference. Right. And like for us, we, we try to pump as much content and information to the website. That's just informative and real like the doctors write it themselves they spend the time to do it and we do a lot of intros and webinars and free seminars like we, we do a free seminar just about every month from our physicians to talk about hey i got heel pain let's talk about that or hey my low back hurts let's just talk about what that is mm -hmm. so and we'll take consultations all day long from people you know it doesn't hurt to call and ask or it doesn't hurt to come in for one visit and be like, hey, I've had this bother me. Like, is it even a real thing or not? So I think those are the, the big things. It's like, you know, just get hooked up with somebody who's reputable. Um, private groups, you know, are really, really good for that because like we're built off reputations, not off of money necessarily. I think that's a big misnomer. It's like, if you're a private group, you just care about money. No, that's not it at all. It, it all comes down to just providing the right aligned care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Andrew, I think this has been a very insightful conversation. I appreciate you breaking down, you know, Columbia Orthopedic Group, the great things that you guys are doing, the stats, the patient, the patient, patient centric care. Holy cow. Say that five times fast um, that, that you guys are providing. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And I think this has been a great interview and I really appreciate you being on Business Ninjas today. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Great to have you.